Hello folks, this is a problem in which we examine what happens when we connect two blocks with a rope that passes over a frictionless pulley. The problem head is in the description down below, so if you want to pause for a second, go read it and come back. We're told that the two boxes in the figure are attached by a massless rope that passes over a frictionless pulley. We're told that box A weighs 49 newtons and box B weighs 20 newtons and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box A and the tabletop is 0.14. Now the first part of the problem is asking us to draw a free body diagram, which we would anyways to analyze this problem. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the free body diagrams. I'm going to start with box A. I'm going to represent the object as a point, take away the environment and leave its effect, Consider the forces acting on the object, not by the object. And here is the list of forces to consider. First of all, there is gravity, a gravitational force. Since we're near the surface of the Earth, then the force of gravity is represented by the weight, and it's equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration due to the force of gravity, which we've taken in this course to be 9.8 meter per second squared. And the direction of this force, of course, is always, always towards their gravitating body, in this case, Earth, so it's pointing down. So that's the force of gravity, which is equal to the mass of object A multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. But in fact, in this case, we're told that the weight is 49 newtons of box A. Then, of course, if there is a tension force, then we have to represent that. The rope pulls on the object, so the rope is pulling A to the right, so that's how I represent this force. That's the force of tension. Then, because there are two surfaces that are in contact, block A with the table, then there will be surface forces. They come in two components, there is the normal force and there is the friction force. The normal force is always there and it's always perpendicular to the surface. So A exerts a force on the table that's pointing down, and the table exerts a force on A that is pointing up. Now we only care about the one that is exerted on the object, which is block A. So we care about the one that the table exerts on A, which is pointing up. That's the normal force. Now if there is friction between the two surfaces, it will be parallel to the surface, and it will oppose the relative movement of the two surfaces together. So we're told that the friction coefficient between block A and the table is 0.14, so that means there will be a friction force. Now since box B is sliding, is going to be sliding downwards, that means box A would be sliding to the right, which means that the friction force will be opposing the sliding of the two surfaces together, so it'll be the force of friction by the table on box A is going to be to the left. And that will be a kinetic friction force because the two surfaces are actually moving relative to each other. And I know that the friction force is always equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. So keep that in mind. And that's it. These are the forces acting on A. As for block B, of course there is always Earth. So that's pulling on block B down, so that's the force of gravity is equal to the mass of B multiplied by the acceleration due to the force of gravity. But I'm also told in the question head that this is 20 newtons. Aside from gravity, there is also a tension force due to the rope being here, and the box pulls on the rope down, but the rope pulls on the box up. So that is the tension force. There is no surface contact, so there is no friction or normal forces, and there are no other forces, any other forces that are acting on block B. Part B asks about the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of box B. Now, to analyze the acceleration, the first thing I have to do is I have to pick a coordinate system to analyze the problem in. One choice that is always a useful choice to make is to pick the axes such that one of them is along the direction of motion. That's always good practice. So in the case of B, I can pick the axes to be, one of them to be in the direction of motion. So that's up and down. Doesn't matter which direction. I'll pick up to be positive y and to the right to be positive x. 
As for block A, I can make a different choice. Notice that these choices are analysis choices, so I don't have to be consistent between A and B. So I can choose for A something different, but in this case, it so happens that it's useful to pick the same thing because I know box A is either going to be moving to the left or to the right. In fact, I know it's going to be moving to the right. So I can just pick x-axis to be along that direction of motion and then y-axis is perpendicular to that. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to label the direction that I think the acceleration is going to be in. And here I have to be consistent between A and B because that's physical. So for example, if I think B is going to be going down and I label that acceleration as going down, then for A I have to be labeling it going to the right. That's because they're connected by a rope that does not stretch. So if box B moves one meter down, box A moves one meter to the right. If box B moves one meter per second down, box A moves to the right one meters per second. And the same is true for the acceleration. If box B moves down as one meter per second squared, A has to move to the right at one meter per second squared. So while the choice of the coordinate system, I didn't have to make the same choice between A and B, for the choice of the acceleration, I have to be physically consistent between A and B. The directions have to be consistent and the magnitude of the acceleration has to be consistent. Now this choice, up or down, that choice I made to be down, but it could have been up. In this case, one thing you could do is you could always make a choice and if the value of the acceleration comes out to be negative, that means it's the opposite in reality it's the opposite to the choice, the assumption that you made. Now we're ready to solve Newton's second law. Now just as a reminder, here's what Newton's second law says. It says that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass of the object. And of course it works component-wise because this is a vector equation. So in the x direction, the x component of the acceleration is equal to the x component of the force divided by the, of the net force divided by the mass. And in the y direction, the y component of the acceleration is equal to the y component of the net force divided by the mass of the object. Now for block B in the y direction, I can say block B is not in equilibrium in the y direction. So this implies, according to Newton's second law, so the y component of the net force for block B is equal to the mass of block B multiplied by the acceleration of block B in the y direction. So that is to say, from the figure, the net force for block B is the vector sum of the forces on block B. And here I'm looking at the y component of it, so I'm looking at the y component of all the forces acting on block B. I have the tension force in the plus y direction. And I have the force of gravity, but that is in the minus y direction. And that is equal to the mass of B multiplied by the acceleration of B in the y direction. But notice that the acceleration is in the opposite of what I call positive y, so it has to take a negative sign. Now the problem here is that I don't know what the tension force is, and I don't know what the acceleration of mass B is, because that's what I'm trying to find. So this equation is not enough to find what the acceleration is, but I think another equation is going to help me and it's going to have to do with block A. I know that block A is in equilibrium in the y direction, so that implies that the net force in the y direction for block A has to be equal zero. So here I'll write the forces in the y direction. I have the normal force in positive y direction and I have the force of gravity in the negative y direction because it's opposite to what I chose to be positive y. And that is going to be equal to the zero. This implies then that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity in magnitude and that is equal to 49 newtons. Now in the x direction, block A is not in equilibrium in x. 
And that, of course, implies that the x component of the net force acting on A is equal to the mass of A multiplied by the acceleration of A in the x direction. So looking back on the forces acting on A in the x direction, the normal force and the force of gravity you don't have any x components, but the tension is in positive x and the friction is in negative x. The acceleration of A is in the positive x direction, so it gets a positive sign. And notice that the acceleration of B and the acceleration of A are given the same symbol, that's because they do have the same magnitude. I know that the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. I do know the normal force, I just found that out. The coefficient of friction is given in the head of the problem to be 14%. And I still don't know the tension, I still don't know the acceleration, but now I have two equations that I can solve together to figure out what the tension is and what the acceleration is. This is a math skill in which you're trying to solve two equations to get one of the unknowns. One way of doing this is to isolate the tension from this equation and sub for that expression in the second equation and solve the equations to find what the acceleration is. Another technique is to say that the to isolate the tension from equation 1, isolate the tension from equation 2, and then equate the two equations. A third technique would be to just add or subtract the two equations depending on the relative signs of the variable you're trying to get rid of. Whichever technique you choose is okay. Let's try the technique in which I subtract the two equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 2 minus equation 1. So this is when I subtract two equations, that means I subtract the left-hand sides from each other and I subtract the right-hand sides from each other. So that means tension minus coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force minus the left-hand side of equation 1, tension minus the force of gravity acting on B is equal to the right-hand side minus the right-hand side mass of A multiplied by the acceleration minus minus the mass of B multiplied the acceleration. So I get positive sign of mass B multiplied by the acceleration. This right hand side can be, I could take the acceleration common and therefore the acceleration will be equal to the tension minus the tension cancels out, and I get minus coefficient of friction times the normal force minus minus the force of gravity on B, or the weight of B. And if I divide both sides by the mass of A plus the mass of B, and this is what I get. Putting in the numbers, notice that to calculate the mass of A, I had to divide the weight of A by the acceleration due to the force of gravity, and to get the mass of B, I had to divide the weight of B by the acceleration due to the force of gravity. 1.87 meter second square. Since it came out to be positive, that means that my assumption of the acceleration of B going down is the correct one, and therefore the direction of the acceleration for box B, the acceleration has a magnitude of 1.87 meter per second squared, and the direction is downwards.